Hi, my name is uh, Robert Byrne. I'm an interventional cardiologist uh, at the Deutsches Herzzentrum in Munich in Germany. And uh, we're here at uh, TCT 2018 in San Diego. And uh, we've just heard some uh, great data from uh, Peter Stella uh, regarding the RECREATE uh, trial. So Peter, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Um, so you presented as a late-breaking trial the results of the RECREATE uh, trial. Mm -hmm. And you also published the results simultaneously in circulation. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about the background to this uh, study? Certainly. So the background basically was that we have a number of uh, new developments in the DES world, um, basically considering stand safety, efficacy, and one of them is uh, the development, further development of the permanent polymers yeah. on DESs. The second one is the biodegradable polymers in order to get rid of them in a couple of months. And the last one is to, uh, pre uh, to provide us a polymer-free DES. So with all the enhanced capacities of the polymer, durable polymer DES, but without the polymer. Um, and we wanted to see uh, how a latest polymer free stand performed against a durable polymer stand second generation in an all comers study. Okay, so what were the two stents that you studied then in this trial? So first was, the first choice was the permanent polymer stand and we went for the resolute integrity because at the time of study design this was the only stand which had a CE approval of stopping, although temporarily, but stopping VAPT after one month. Okay. And the, the comparator stand was created uh, by Alvi Medica, which is a polymer-free platform and which we had experience on uh, in previous clinical work, but mainly in the demonstration study where we saw with OCTs uh, follow-up at three months that the coverage was even better than the known bare metal stand division um, at one month. Okay. So we thought this tend to be very safe yeah. to use for the short DPT. Okay, so a strong rationale then for the study stand yeah. and also a robust benchmark for the comparator stand, exactly. if you like. Yes. So tell us a little bit more about the uh, main design of the trial. Yeah, so the study was a physician initiated, I think, uh, very importantly, a non sponsored yeah. study. So it was really out of the university. Um, randomized all comers, real all comers, um, where patients were randomized one, in a one-to-one -one fashion, but also stratified to troponin status and diabetes. Um, it totally, the design was set up for 1,500 patients, um, and we had three centers participating: uh, Utrecht, Heerlen in the south of the Netherlands, and uh, the center in Luxembourg. Okay. Primary endpoint was target lesion failure, a 12 months follow-up. Uh, secondary endpoint, all NACE, 12 months follow-up. Yeah. And clinical follow-up was one month, one year, and is supposed to be the same at three years. Okay, so what did you find in terms of the yeah. primary analysis finding? Yeah. What was the main message? So the main message was primary analysis, target lesion failure was comparable in both arms. And according to our calculations, which you can see in, in circulation, the circulation paper, yeah. Um, the primary endpoint of non-inferiority was met. Secondary endpoint, NACE, uh, was the same, so no differences between the two arms. And um, looking at the subgroups, basically for the whole study there were no differences, real difference between the two arms. Um, the one-month DAPT, which was quite a large cohort, again all comers, long lesions, yeah. CTOs, uh, small vessels, uh, calcified lesions, um, we had the same result um, target lesion failure. What was interesting is that the stent thrombosis, which we were of course a bit yeah. afraid of, stent thrombosis was quite low, uh, I think, uh, so 0.9% overall. If you take out two very early ones, you get back to 0.7. So generally comparable results, yes. uh, low event rates, particularly yeah. in terms of something like uh, stent thrombosis, you're under 1% yes. despite an all comer yeah. uh, study yeah. design. Tell us a little bit more then again about the dual antiplatelet therapy. What was the exact recommendation and uh, did the patients adhere to this? Do yeah. we have this information? So um, the exact re recommendation was one month of DAPT yeah. in, in patients um, with troponin negative status at enrollment. So we yeah. did not look up, up, up for troponin after after the PCI. Yeah. So we might have missed some small infarction there, especially in CTOs. And we checked we checked this. Uh, there was there was so this is this will be a later paper hopefully. Yeah. Um, there was almost a 98.9 percent .9 adherence of the patients to yeah. the okay. prescribed medication. Yeah. So there was a, just a very small amount of patients who continued, 
or yeah. who even stopped Sulin in the four weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's an important yes. point, and that brings me to the next question. Uh, how generalizable are these results for patients in everyday practice? I think, I think so for me, there's, there's, there's two messages. So non-inferiority of the create versus resolute. So I think it's a good device. Regarding the short DAPT, um, I think this study shows that with these two devices, if you want to stop DAPT for whatever reason in a patient, high BD risk is scheduled for operation, whatever, mm -hmm. you are quite safe with regards to stent thrombosis. Okay, well, uh, I think I'll end by just saying congratulations again. It's a great achievement to have the data ready and presented so quickly as a real late-breaking trial and also to publish it simultaneously in circulation. So congratulations on this and uh, Thank thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Robert. Thank you.